All right, welcome to Voice of the Valley. I am your host, Kathy Wilcox. Okay, we got the right camera going now, and this is called Fun with the Green Screen. See that? That's why I asked my guests not to wear green, because if they did, they'd be like that. That's kind of a Hollywood, probably most everybody knows by now that a lot of these drama scenes and chase scenes and what have you are filmed against a green screen. So that's how it works. That's how it works. So they put uh, Matt Damon or Tom, well, Tom Cruise is crazy enough to hang off tall buildings in Dubai, so he's not a good example. But most sane actors, if they're doing an action scene, they'll use a lot of green screen. So they can just put that behind the actor and everybody's safe. So. Well, we have a new situation uh, today for Voice of the Valley. I'm flying without a net. Uh, I don't have a guest for the first 15 minutes. So it's all me and it's all you. So we're just going to have a little fun. I'm going to do a little housekeeping. I'm going to do a little promotion for some new friends of mine. So I do want to remind you that if you're watching, number one, I thank you very much. Number two, there is a chat line uh, just to the right of the screen where you see me in the little uh, TV, there's a, you can push that button and you can type in a question so that we can get those in real time. So if you have anything to talk about, uh, suggestions for the show, uh, you know, things that you would like to see. Also, uh, guests for the show. I'm always looking for uh, guests who provide a certain service or product or an actor or a business. Something that is pertinent to the Valley where we can promote that and keep the dollars in the valley, okay? Buying America is is good, but buying valley is best. So, first thing I'd like to address is this word amazing, okay? Amazing has got to be the most overused word ever. And it could be my fault, I just could be watching really low-end shows. But, for example, the um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, everything's amazing. Their dress is amazing. Their hair is amazing. Their houses are amazing. You know, let's let's save amazing for really amazing things, and let's think of a different word, shall we? So we're gonna have a little we're gonna have a little word play, and this is using the Webster's Collegiate Thesaurus. Okay. So, other words that can be used in place of amazing: astonish, astound, dumbfound, flabbergast, admiration. Marvelous wonderment. Um, miraculous, surprising, wondrous, also strange. Amazing doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. It can be really a bad thing. Like, wow, look at that amazing car accident. Look at all those limbs scattered all over the road. So it can be a strange circumstance. So just keep that in mind over the holidays. I'm guilty of it. I know it's like the, the word hero. Most of the people that we look at as heroes, like, okay, I'll name drop the Kardashians. Kardashians, they're not heroes. Uh, real heroes are like um, our war veterans and people who actually fight for our country. This is just an example of, of a hero. So let's do our best. Let's try to use a different word other than amazing and save amazing for when it, something really is amazing. Okay, so that was the first piece of business I wanted to clear up. Last week, I had the uh, good fortune of being invited to Fresno Filmmakers Alliance Mixer, and they held that at Babylon down in the Tower District, where we are now. And I met some really, I'm not going to say it, very wondrous people and local talent, local filmmakers, directors, writers. It was very, it was a very cool experience because I'd been hearing about these, these people, some of these people from my acting friends for quite a while. One of those people was a young man by the name of Isaac, and I'm sorry, Isaac, if I'm going to mispronounce your name. It's P-I-C-H-E, Piche, Pich, Pitch. I'm not sure, but it's P-I-C-H-E. His family, he works with his mom and his brother. They put together a feature film called Damn California and Don't Mess With Our Water. Now, I missed, I'm going to hold this up like this. This is their flyer. They did have a screening last Friday, and they're having another one tomorrow on the 13th. 
and it starts at 6 p.m. at the C-A-R-T, and I apologize, I don't know what that stands for, 2555 South Clovis Avenue, and it's behind the Sierra Vista Mall. And for more info on Isaac, you can go to Fresno Filmmakers Alliance on Facebook. And I'm going to do my very, very best to make it to the screening because I, if I'm going to be talking the talk, I better walk the walk. You know what I mean? Uh, we are all about supporting our local talent here in the Valley. So I would encourage everyone to go. It's free. They wanted me to make sure that everyone knew that it was free. Free is always good. Free is great, as a matter of fact. Let me see if I can get that in full frame. Okay? Okay, so that's Damn California, Don't Mess With Our Water. And I believe, let's see. Oh, I thought I had a website down here, but I guess I don't. So just go to uh, Facebook, and you can get more. Uh, you'll be there tomorrow night. Oh, great, awesome. Well, I hope to see you there, whoever, whoever you are, but thanks. I'll be there tomorrow night. Oh, this is Vince. Hi, Vince. You're always going to talk about you next. Um, okay. The next person that I met, very, very good. Great guy. All these people were just super, super nice. Uh, Vince Cosentino. Okay. I met him. And my friend Nancy O'Hara, hi, Nancy, if you're watching, has been talking about Vince for, for quite a while and Matt Sconce and these people that she's had the pleasure of working with. She's an outstanding actress. Vince is going to, this is, I don't know if you can see that, I'll get that the right way, Beaten Path is a new feature film that's coming out this spring. I have uh, a few friends that are in this. One was a previous guest, Carol Love, the lady who came on with all the great costumes and dresses. She's actually in the movie Richard Krebs, who is a local talent, who's done many things. He's a uh, host on one of the uh, Valley uh, television shows. And you can learn more about this movie at www.beatenpaththemovie.com. And I can't wait for this to come out. This is going to be really, really good. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be well worth the wait. And I know they're still filming. And then it comes the editing and all of that. And then we'll get ready to roll this out um, this spring. So kudos to all our local directors, our talented uh, script writers, directors, actors. I would love to have all of you on. Maybe Vince and uh, Isaac, we can have your um, main players on when the, uh, you know, if you want, just let me know. We can do that. We can do that for you. Okay. So we covered amazing. We covered the local, uh, what's happening in uh, the local film industry. And now, I, I, I have to admit, the next thing that I want to do is, um, I stole it, okay, it's, it's a direct ripoff of one of my favorite hosts on the BBC, and I've talked about him before, it's Graham Norton, I think he's, I think he's outstanding, I think he's funny, and uh, this, he loves, I don't know where he finds these websites, but one of the ones that was particularly amusing to me was funny animal pictures, yeah, funny animal pictures, so, if we could pull up the first, this is the first one, uh, Kylie. Kylie is not that one. It's uh, the John Lennon cat. There we go. Okay. I almost wish they hadn't put any text on the picture because I thought this was so interesting. If you're over 40, you would see Dis Kitty as John Lennon. If you're under 40, you would see Dis Kitty, Dis, D-I-S, as Harry Potter. And... It's really true. If you look at this cat, you can see John Lennon. That's, okay, I'm over 40. Not very much, but I am. And I definitely see John Lennon in that cat. And I also see Harry Potter. So I can look at it from, from both sides. It's one of those weird optical kinds of illusions. Um, okay, what's the next one? Uh, party cat. Party cat. Now we have two pictures by, I'm assuming, different people. Now, this cat really looks like he's had a good time. He has, he's got his Bud Light there. He looks a little out of it. And what's the next one? There we go. Another Bud Light. Is this a favorite of uh, felines? I don't know. Or maybe it is sent in by the, the same person. They just share their buds with their cats. I don't know. That's pretty funny. Okay. Bachelor cat. This is the bachelor cat. Yeah, I've gone out with this guy. Laying on the, laying on the couch with the remote on one side, beer on the other side. All he needs is a, 
of, you know, a bowl of pretzels in the front, and he's good to go. Okay, number four, we have, oh, that's Finger Cat. That's okay, we'll talk about Finger Cat. Uh, finger, you know, I, I kind of debated whether I wanted to show this, because I want to promote family values and all that kind of good stuff, but I just thought that this was so fun. Now, am I just an idiot? Is this Photoshopped, or did they actually manipulate their cat paw to do this? I don't know. I don't know anything about Photoshop. I just know that was kind of funny, and so I wanted to show it. And then we have, which is the next one? Oh, Ikea cat. The Ikea cat, you can send a cat for Christmas. And I'm assuming there's a whole cat in there, and not just the head and the tail. But um, apparently Ikea can uh, box up a cat for you and send it, you know, with a gift receipt to a friends and family. I thought it was a great idea. And what do we have next? We have Kitten and Soldier. Okay, Kitten and Soldier. Oh, we were talking about real heroes, the people who fight for our country. I thought this was so adorable. Please, for to come home soon. You not forgets me, right? Now, okay, he's a little kitten. He doesn't have the, the full grammar down, but I just thought this was so cute. And um, I hope that whoever that soldier is comes home safely and soon, and we don't have any more war. That would be the best of all worlds. What's next? What do you have? Invisible bike? Oh, okay. Invisible bike. There we go. Now, this is... You know, I have a cat. I have a cat, and there's no way that they could get up in the air like that. She's she's wonderful. I, I, and I neglected to bring in a, a photo of Ozzy. Um, but, you know, really, it, it looks like this cat is riding a bike. And I thought that was pretty amazing. Now, I don't know how in the world. Again, I don't know if this is photoshopped. But very clever, very clever picture. Okay, what's next? We did a Kia cat. Okay, I think we're coming to, yes. Now, please tell me that there are not cats this large in our society. I mean, if this guy were raising his kids and they look like that, I mean, there's this whole thing about obesity and good nutrition. Are there really cats this large? Because I've never seen one. Can we pull up the next one, Kylie? Because I have three of these. So here's another one. Look at this cat. This cat has got to weigh, I don't know, 50 pounds? Did, I, I am amazed. And here's another one. Look at this guy. It's, it's truly frightening. I've never seen a cat like that anywhere other than the zoo. Um... Okay, is that one showing or is that one next up? Okay, so we have, so please, if you know anything about cats, I don't know that much about cats, although the only thing I know about cats is that I love them, okay? The last picture, cover your eyes because it, you could actually burn your retinas out by looking at this at this picture. And Okay, go ahead. We'll, we'll just go for it. Just pop it up. I don't know. I don't know. Um, people, really? Really? Was this, was this on your Christmas card? I don't know. And and these are pretty chunky cats. So they they looks like they had a lot to cover. So I don't know. All right, the last thing if we have time we're going to run um oh my god cat. This was um something that I just came across actually. I just saw it this Saturday night on the Graham Norton show. So thank you Graham for uh for entertaining us all. And then I think we're going to have a break and we'll get our first guest on. All right. Oh my god kitty. Let's go. Welcome back. All right. Now it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas as far as Kathy's concerned because we got a full array of candies and yummy, yummy treats. I want to introduce to you Jeannie Burkhart, who I met at Best of Fresno. And after I sampled her candies, I knew why she was had that, that honor, Best, Best of Fresno. Hey, thanks. Yes, you're very welcome. Um, so... Candy, you've been doing this for a while. 
Well, specifically the caramels and the toffees. And a little over 30 years. 30 years? Yes. Okay, so you have it down. And look at the beautiful gift packaging that we have. I mean, these are really nice. I mean, anybody would want to get these. Anybody. Um, but let's start with, really briefly, how this all came about. How did you get started making candy? It's the same old story that everybody tells. All my friends and family were, you know, enjoying what I made, and I'd give it away at Christmas, and they're always saying, oh, you should sell this. So I formed a business about eight years ago and have been selling it just mostly around Christmas time. And much to their chagrin, it's for sale now. It isn't free. Good. Make them pay. Make them pay in every way you can. That's what I say. Don't leave any money on the table. I'm always telling my daughter that. All right. I want to mention your website so that while we're talking, maybe if you want to look up the website, it's www.burkhart. That's B-U-C-K-H-A-R. B-U-R-K. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry. Thank you. That's why I have guests. B-U-R-K-H-A-R-T. Candy.com. Correct. So you can peruse and shop at your leisure while you're watching. Okay. So now you make quite, I got some uh, notes, and thank you very much for your notes, but you make sure. quite, um, you're very proud of the, the, the carm, caramel right. that you make. Now, already there's, there's, there could be dissension. Now, are you a caramel person or a caramel person? How do you pronounce it? Caramel. I don't put on airs. It's caramel to me. Oh, I'm so sure the dictionary says caramel, but... So caramel would be more uppity and high, you know, well, highfalutin. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it may be even more of a regional thing in this country. Really? Yeah. It well, like be. we have different pronunciations in the Far East Coast in the South. True. So whatever everybody wants to say, that's fine. They love it. And it doesn't really matter because it's all good, right? Okay. So why is your caramel so special? Well, I developed it. Um, based on a family friend's recipe. And then I kept tweaking it and tweaking it. It bears no resemblance to the original recipe whatsoever. But it is special because it is so loaded with butter and cream. Um, <sighs> and because I know how to process through the cooking in very small batches so that there's no need for any fillers or inexpensive ingredients or emulsifiers or stabilizers. It's just the pure, simple, honest ingredients. And it's, it's the pure caramel taste comes through. None of the things that you find in something that's got a shelf stability of probably 10 or 15 or more years, which is not yeah. real caramel. And um, because I have figured out how to put as much butter as possible into it, it doesn't we, stick to your teeth. And we thank you for that. <laughs> we, we thank you for that. As much butter. And unlike, um, who's that, the French... Um, who said, bon appétit. Oh, Julia Child. Oh, Julia Child, yeah. yes. Yeah, uh, butter, butter. The more butter, the better, uh, you know, as far as I would say. It's one of our main food groups, butter, uh, sugar, salt, and caffeine. Uh, my major food groups. And, well, uh, champagne is thrown in there, too, for me. Okay. But, but uh, you know, it's all good. Okay, so I really liked when you said uh, you uh, utilize local businesses right. to buy your ingredients and Hawaii. We well, threw some Hawaii in there. I Yay! Have to. I, my goal is, in fact, my, my unwavering policy is just to use ingredients from the U.S. Excellent. So when I put, um, for instance, in the espresso caramels, I use uh, microgram coffee. Um, and also in the toffee here that you're going to get to try, the macadamia espresso toffee with white and dark chocolate. Again, there is the espresso in there and the macadamia nuts. Now, these are available worldwide, and largely they're not U.S. products. So I buy directly from the growers on the big island of Hawaii, Hamakua Farms, and also Rusty's Hawaiian Coffee. And it is very fine quality. Well, yeah, it must be because you told me that it costs $60 a pound. For the coffee. For the coffee. Well, you know, that's, it's that's extremely rare. That's more than coffee. Starbucks. <laughs> I didn't think anybody could outdo Starbucks. $60 a pound. You'll never settle for Starbucks again, will you? No. No, no, no. no. I, uh, well, how can you go back to, you know, hamburger after you've had, you know, steak? Oh, no, I like a good filet. burger. Yeah, I do too. I, I have to be honest. Okay. So you also talk about an old-fashioned technique. What, what is that? That's, um, I could call it proprietary, but if anyone knows much about historical cooking, they would know. It is a very slow cooking in small batches. Okay. Um, we do everything by hand. I mean, this is truly handmade confections. And um, we cook it over um, a very low heat, gradually work it up to the correct temperature, and you have to stir it constantly. Okay. Um, just take very tender loving care of it and coax it into being just the perfect caramel. Now, once in a while, something will slip by me and it isn't perfect caramel because I do taste every batch of the caramels and toffees um, for quality control. It's a horrible job. But somebody has to do it. Well, so <laughs> you know, somebody with that kind of a job, you would think they would have a little, 
you know, extra bulk. Jeannie is like, she's like this big <laughs> around everywhere. I mean, it's not fair. It is so not fair. God, why did you do that? Well, I do eat caramel every day. I don't know. Maybe that's the trick. And I have probably caramel for most breakfast. I'm serious. I'm not making this up. Eat caramel for breakfast? Yeah. Well, my sister gave me this great idea. That's how the espresso caramels were born. She used to um, take the caramels and drop them into her coffee cup and then add the coffee and stir it up. And then there would be this fine layer of butter, melted butter on top, and she would drink that. And I went, I can do better than that. So I made the espresso caramels. That is... Uh yeah, that's just so sinful, but it's just they so are, wonderful at the same it. time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so let's, I want to make sure that we get, like, this is a beautiful package. Now, Thank what you. is, these are an assortment of your caramels. That has uh, four flavors of caramels in there. Um, we have the, the basic vanilla buttercream. There is toasted almond and espresso and also the cocoa caramel, which has a 100% unsweetened cocoa um, chocolate worked into that as well. And how much would something like this run? The assorted caramels sell for $25 a pound on the website. That's a bargain. That now, is a bargain. We are a work in progress on the right. website. The, okay. the shipping module is not perfect yet, so it does charge shipping for Fresno and Clovis. And I don't believe that local people should have to pay shipping. So we have a distribution point at West and Herndon, and you can find out about it by calling. Sometimes we do deliveries on uh, larger orders. and. Even though the website will charge shipping charges, each of the orders then when you pick it up has a, a freight rebate check in it. So you reimburse for the full amount of the Isn't shipping. That oh, that's great. You can that's find a way to get it. Now around. we have a little stocking stuffer. This is so cute. That's What's a four this little guy? Box. That's what does this something like that run? That's seven and a half dollars for the four ounce box okay. of caramels. Roughly twelve caramels in there. Okay. If you push really hard. And this, these are really these are beautiful. That's my best seller thing. This is your best seller. Okay, what is this? Those are caramel chocolate pretzel rods mm -hmm. and it is a pretzel rod dipped in the vanilla buttercream caramel, very thick layer of that. Then it is dipped in either white or dark chocolate. We have both of those in there. Then it's rolled in a mixture of chopped toasted almonds and toffee shards. You know, why do I toffee? I suddenly feel like Homer Simpson, you know, he drools and he's in <laughs> I was trying to mention the screens at home probably, I'm like, ah. Uh, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. I, I Do you want to see a cross remember. section of that? Yes, let's see a cross section. Oh, now I feel like it I'm back looks, in anatomy class. It's kind of like dessert sushi. Um, it's right there. Okay. And actually, um, quite by accident, we discovered if you cut the pretzel into small pieces, you, you get a small bite, but it tastes better. Isn't it amazing? It's kind of like improving on perfection, if I do say so. I feel like I'm on HSN, right? <laughs> Just and you, this is offered in flex pay, so you don't have to pay everything all at once. Isn't that great? Um, no, we. I don't I'm think we not offer flex. We don't offer here. flex. We don't. Oh, you don't watch HSN? No. Oh, okay. I don't watch anything. I'm cooking. You're cooking. Afterwards. You're making candy. Oh, I'm so silly. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything, and unbelievably, we're once again out of time. Is there anything you want to add? We want to get your website in, www.burkhartcandy.com. Um, your phone number is? 559-920-7557. I will say that because it's all handmade, the demand is great already. Everything is in limited supply. So it's always first come, first serve. But I've solved any potential shortage. Okay. Um, this particular box here. If um, if someone wants to, we can sell them the product, put a gift certificate in, something like a rain check, and then the recipient will still have this beautiful box for Christmas, Isn't that great? and then they can collect on the goodies later. That is a fantastic idea. Jeannie, I appreciate all of this so much. I can't wait to have a little nibble Turn on a commercial. We're going we're, we're to plow through this while we're on a commercial. Um, and you're... And you said you had two distribution sites. Where were those again? Uh, one, it's a, uh, West and Herndon. West and Herndon. Uh, and then also we have a limited delivery system. Okay, limited delivery. Fresno Curl, this, yes. And phone number 920-7557. So are we ready for commercial break? Okay, very good. Thank you, Jeannie. Thanks. So much for coming. It's so great sure, of you. Thanks. All right, take care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Everybody here is kind of chowing down on these uh, great candies that, that Jeannie left. That was very, very nice. I am so excited about my next guest. This, this young man right here is McKinley Lee, or Malik. He was Snoop Dogg's former bodyguard. Now, I want to say that right, because I don't, 
I don't have a vast history in the world of rap. I have to admit, I'm just like a quasi white girl, <laughs> and who grew up in the suburbs. And um, the only all I know about rap is what I see on TV, and uh, for my daughter. So she's a little bit more tuned into. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. You are somebody with a lot going on, and you have, at a very young age, had a very interesting life so far. Yeah. Um, Tell us, where do you come from? What's your family like? How did you come to California? Let's start with that. Okay, well, actually, I was, I was born in Chicago, and uh, it was kind of rough there. Yeah. And my father was in the law enforcement, and a couple situations happened, and he moved us to Iowa, which is like right across the river. Hmm. So um, I grew up there. And in Iowa? In Iowa. Okay. Uh, I was an athlete there, and uh, eventually went on to, to play football and ended up in California. Um, Who'd you play football for? I played, I was at a, a, at a junior college there. Okay. And I transferred to go to Long Beach State, and that situation didn't work out. So okay. So that's why I ended up in Long Beach. Okay. So, yeah. Hey, you know what? Um, I think it was John Lennon who said, life is what happens when you're busy <laughs> making other plans. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, okay, so you're in California now. You're in Long Beach. How did you hook up with Snoop Dogg? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a funny situation. Actually, not funny, but... um. I was trying to follow in the footsteps of my dad, you know, so when I stopped playing football, I wanted to go into law enforcement. And at that time, you know, you had to be 21 to get into the academy. And so I took a job as a security guard um, at this nightclub called the Red Onion. And lo and behold, you know, that's when Snoop came in and he was with uh, Suge Knight and, and some other people that were with the record company at Big the time. Big names. Yeah, I had no idea who they were, you know, and I was from, I wasn't from California, okay. you know, and this is the time when, you know, when uh, there was a movie called Deep Cover that was coming okay. out, and Snoop wasn't known then, he was just basically getting introduced, mm. you know, through that, so he was kind of like under the radar, and uh, they were going on a, like a little promotional tour, and he wanted a bodyguard, he needed a bodyguard, he had no idea that, you know, I was going into that field, he had no idea of my, you know, my fighting background, so he wanted a bodyguard, and uh, he asked me, he liked how I handled him through the club. You know, so it, it turned out to be really good. We kind of like had a, it was like a, a weird chemistry. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, he asked me if I'd be interested in, in going on tour. I didn't believe him. You know, I was just like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, another good friend of mine who was working, who ended up being one of the executives for, uh, for uh, Priority Records, his name was Kevin Black. And Kevin Black had really solidified, you know, the deal between Snoop and I because they went on tour. And they came back, and you know, Snoop had kept asking, you know, Black about me. He's like, man, you know, we need to get hold of Malik, blah 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 blah. So, make a long story short, you know, uh, they showed up again, you know, the following weekend that they got back, and presented me with a check and said, listen, let's, I really want you to go on the road. So I said, oh well, this might work. <laughs> yeah, when there's so, cash on the table, yeah, they're yeah. they're serious. At that time, I'm you know 19, 20 years old, so it was a, it was a good thing. So, so you must have been excited. You must yeah. have thought, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. Yeah. this is my lucky day. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Okay, so now I've never seen him in person, but he seems like a like a kind of a small guy. No, actually, he's not. He's he's like he's six five. You're six, no, he's six four, six five. Yeah. Get out. Oh yeah, and that was a, and that was the whole thing. He did not want at that particular time. He didn't want a big guy. He wanted somebody that was underneath him. You know, who could. You know, that's, that's actually smart. People really? have this wrong. Yeah, people Why? have this concept of that a bodyguard should be big. Yeah. You really don't want that. You don't want a, a big elusive lethargic type of person you know you want somebody who can kind of get you out of a situation if it becomes physical mm -hmm. but you want somebody who can kind of either talk your way out of it or get you out of there or, or you know, just quick enough to handle something somebody with a cool head yeah, who definitely. can kind of okay mm -hmm. yeah. I had no idea he yeah. was that tall oh yeah he I am shocked I thought size. he was like prince size no okay no, okay, because well, you, you're a nice, I mean, you're a strapping guy. I'm a guy. short guy, though. My wife will tell you, I'm not very tall. But, I am 5'8", man, 5'9". <laughs> trust me, this guy is, yeah. Mm, yeah, he's got going on his, okay, so, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Sure. I, um, I, I told you on the phone, I tried to buy your book, yeah. and I, you didn't bring a copy with you. I have not. Well, it was kind of short notice. I know, I, I know. I couldn't get a copy for you. And Malik was so sweet. He just, he said, yeah, I could be there Monday. He's recording, you're yeah. recording a new mm -hmm. CD. I have an album coming out. Is it yeah. rap? Yes. Okay. It's like well, it's like a it's a mixture between it's like a it's like a gospel rap. It's like a gospel. Nice. Yeah. All my music is like that. It's I've been doing music all my life, even before Snoop. I started out with music. Well, let me give you your first plug. Okay. His sure. book is Chosen by Fate: My Life Inside Death Row Records, and I did check on Amazon. It is available, and I I definitely want to read this book. I think it yeah. sounds fascinating. Your movie. You have a movie coming out, and it's called the. 
Oh, a documentary. Okay, mm-hmm. it's called The Forgotten. And um, I actually, because I'm such a whiz on the computer now, I actually, we actually have the trailer to show. So can we, sure. let, let's, sure. let's see that now. Just one second. Okay, we're going to pull that up in just a second. Every week I get a little bit more computer savvy and I can do a little <laughs> bit more. But I'm still not where I can edit my own uh, shows for, for YouTube, but that's <laughs> next. Okay. Okay. It's a forgotten. You got people to live and people to die. But his story, his story never dies. I could never be forgotten. Trials and tribulations of a soldier. McKinley Lee in my story. Woodbine. Yea, though he walked through the valleys of the shadow of death, he feared no evil. It's a new day chosen by faith. He's been through so many trials and tribulations Roadblocks and stumbling blocks Lived in some of the hardest penitentiaries Locked down in solitary confinement Just him and his guard Overcame some of the endless hate Men could throw at him A soldier, McKinley Lee It's time I know you remember him Real story, murder was the case. He's helped so many, stood by the side of the people of the world considered great, protected their lives to the very end, but still forgotten. The bodyguard. Now it's his time to share his story, let the world feel his passion, know his pain. McKinley Lee, the forgotten. It's been 15 years And I still wake up And a cold sweat It's the forgotten the forgotten That's how big the controversy got Wow Yeah That is cool. It gives me chills every time I see that I've seen it three or four times now Somewhere along the way Why is it okay something went wrong yeah. Something went way wrong. Definitely. Okay. So we'll talk about why it's called The Forgotten. What brought all this up? What what happened? The murder? Yeah. I the... And I, you know, I still have a hard time with that, that, uh, that accusation that it was a murder because it wasn't. Actually, it was self-defense. Unfortunately, um, someone, someone died. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a situation where uh, Snoop and the rest of our group, we were on our way to the studio. And Snoop and I were upstairs in the apartment because we all lived together. Really? Two, yeah, we had lived together. Actually, uh, Shook had bought a, an apartment complex, and the lower half had four apartments, and the upper half had four apartments. And from the outside, it looked like a regular complex, but it was just where the record company guys stayed. You know? And we're we're about to <coughs> LA. This was in LA. Yeah, this was in Venice. Oh, Venice. Okay. And near a park called Woodbine, which okay. is that's in, in the uh, the trailer that talked about Woodbine Park. Um, there was an altercation that happened downstairs, and Snoop and I were upstairs getting ready, so I heard some commotion downstairs. So I thought that Snoop had went downstairs without me, and that never happened, so we're always together. So my apartment is behind his, so his is, is in front of mine, and then mine is behind us. So usually when he walks out, you know, he would knock on, knock on my door, and we'd go downstairs together. But this particular day, I had thought that he had already went downstairs for some odd reason. And I heard a commotion downstairs, so I run downstairs, and I see someone hanging out of the window arguing. Mm. But I didn't see Snoop, so I was, I was comfortable with that. So the situation had, it was so quick. And I saw someone brandish a gun. Mm. And as I see this, I'm, you know, Snoop is like simultaneously coming downstairs behind me, so he wasn't in any danger at that particular point. So, you know, the guys drove off. You know, I tried to defuse the situation with my guys because they were, you know, hostile. I mean, mm-hmm. because of where they come from, that's that's a really a life-threatening situation. When you get into an argument, and usually after an argument, there's drama. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we calmed everyone down, and we had to be to the studio, you know, by like noon. So at this time, it's already like 10:30. So we have to get on the freeway and, and whatnot. So we're on our way back to the uh, on our way to the studio, and. At that time, we were recording with it's called a DAT player, which was a Diddy audio tape machine, and we needed that machine. So um, one of the guys who was Snoop's cousin, his name is Daz, he forgot the, the the DAT player. So we're coming back down the street, and this is we see the same guys. Mm. I remember the the passenger, a heavy set guy, 
and I remember the deceased hanging out of the window. When he and was, and when just he for, for just to refresh our members, who actually was killed during the? Oh, um, there was there was a, a a young man by the name of Philip Waldemarian who who was shot. Okay. And he and he died. Um, we're on our way back to uh, to the house, and the heavy set guy, he gets in the middle of the street and he flags us down. On his face, I saw, I saw, warning. I saw peace. I saw he wasn't the one who was causing the problem. So I didn't feel like I didn't need to stop, you know. And I, I felt that it was okay to stop. And Snoop was driving, so we pulled over to the side, and he, and you know, I tell him to get back. So. He's at this particular time, maybe 15, 20 feet away from our Jeep. And all I remember him saying still to this day, hey man, listen, I'm sorry. You know, hey, I'm sorry. We know who you guys are, man. He's just, my friend, he's just crazy like that, man. Just, just forget about it. And the next thing you know, we see this guy come out of the bushes. As he's running towards the Jeep, his friend grabs him. His friend tells us to go ahead, go, get out of here, get out of here. He pushes him away. Mm -hmm. And as he pushes him, he reaches. Mm -hmm. When he reaches, I, I mean, I still see it. You know, you Ugh. saw the movie The Matrix? Yes. I saw everything in slow motion. I believe that. And so when he reached, I, you know, I, I fired. <sighs> and unfortunately, you know, he, I, I saw everything. He ran and he fell. I made the 911 call. And, and uh, when the police got there, there was no gun. See, that's why we were charged. There was no gun. How? Okay. We we gotta hold that thought because that's we have to take a commercial break. But we're gonna get into all of that in the trial and and did you go to oh, yes. prison? No, I was actually I didn't go to prison for okay. that. But at that time, you know, I was I was held during the the three years. Okay. You know, without well, bail. We'll pick up when we get back. Thanks. We are back with McKinley Malik Lee Jr. And it was we were just getting into the story. I, I tell you, we were talking during the commercial. And I was kind of joking. I said, "I really, I feel like Barbara Walters. You know, this is my, <laughs> this is, is this such an intense interview? I know." And so, all right, Malik, pick up the story where we left off, yeah. and um, yeah. go ahead. Um, like I said, it was not, it wasn't a murder, you know. And it, when the shooting happened, his friends took the gun. So when the police got there, there was oh, no gun, man. and he was shot in the side from him turning. Right. You know, so the public heard that he was shot in the back. They heard that it was Dr. Dre that shot him. And I mean, they heard there were so many different stories going on. But we weren't arrested, you know, because at that particular time when the shooting happened, our attorney, uh, Johnny Cochran and David Kenner. Really? They, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, I mean, they were, they, uh, uh, David Kenner was, um, at this time, he was in Miami, I believe. And when the, you know, it happened, we had to wait. We were not going down without representation, so we waited you know, the next day or day or so until you know, they got back. And the agreement was that you know, we would go in and tell the story, and you know, everything would be resolved because it was self-defense. But when we got down there, you know, um, I made a statement to the police, Detective Aguiano, and still to this day, <laughs> uh, he said that I was too detailed and too articulate that I had to be lying. Oh, I mean, that, okay. Yeah, this, that, this, this is what he told me. Okay. So um, they booked me and Snoop with first degree murder. Um, they gave, they set a bail a million dollars for Snoop and he bailed out and I was at no bail. I didn't have a bail. Because you were the one that did the actual I was, shooting. I, I was actually, I was a trigger man so I had no bail. Never been in jail in my life, never had a situation and um, I was in jail for murder. How, okay, just, uh, just let's just, let that resonate for a minute. On jail for murder. Never been in trouble. Never. Now you hooked up with um, a celebrity. Yeah. You actually risk your life yeah. to protect this guy. Yes. You shoot in self-defense, mm -hmm. clearly. And now you're sitting in jail on murder charges. I mean, and the thing about it is, this is, this is what, you know, you know, we talk about the justice system, and I, have, I, I love the law enforcement, but I want it to be justice. At the grand jury indictment, I mean, this was an act of God. At the, dram, at the grand jury indictment, the witnesses who happened to be the deceased best friends, they came and they told the truth. They said, look, we lied. We wow, took really? the gun. We took the gun. We saw the bodyguard come out with the gun after our that, guy reached. That was an act so of God. So what they did was, instead of them dropping the case, the prosecution made us go to trial still 
a year, well, at this time, it's like a year and a half later, and they had to say the same thing in front of a jury. Yeah. When that was done, the case was over. Three years later. Three years of your life, yeah. hanging yeah. on the, the good, the honesty of somebody else, mm -hmm. actually t telling the truth. Mm -hmm. So, my question, uh, why The Forgotten? Why is your movie called The Forgotten? Well, the story itself, I mean, is, is, is legendary. It's, it's, you know, God allowed it to happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a calling, you know, there's a calling mm -hmm. in my life and there's something that I have to do, you know. So I don't want this to be forgotten. I don't want the deceased to be forgotten. I don't want his family to be forgotten. And I don't want to be forgotten for what God allowed me to do and to go through for everyone else. So that's that's part of why, you know, it's called forgotten. I mean, I'm a man, you know, I still struggle with, you know, why did this happen? Mm -hmm. Why did this happen? So. That's kind of where, where I'm at right now with that. And, and my biggest thing is I, I really want to reach his family. I really want to make sure that they understand that if I could have changed anything, you know, if, if there was another way that this could have happened, I, w I would have, you know, of course. that's what I wanted. Of course. It wasn't, there wasn't any malicious intent. I was doing my job and uh, I just constantly, you know, just asked for forgiveness and that they understand what happened. I think they know the truth, and the hardest thing, you know, was for them to accept the truth coming from, you know, their people who were actually mm -hmm. with him, you know, so that's, that's, that's my, uh, my dream. You know, I was talking to Malik, um, I, you know, I really didn't know what to expect when I, when I asked Malik and I first talked to him on the phone. I mean, he's so soft-spoken, so polite, so nice, and I think that it's, it, it's, a misconception that everyone in the rap world or hip hop is angry and they just you know they're they're against the Caucasian or the white guy and they want to get back and they want to get even mm -hmm. that's that's really a, a mistake yeah. that's a yeah. misperception it is uh, music is music yeah you know and a lot of people make music and they don't know what music really is music is 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 a spirit you know, yeah. it's it's for those who are gifted to tell a story. You know, and there are some people who who rap and who also sing that still have a lot of the, the, the anger mm -hmm. because of what they've seen, you know, and, and how they grow up, true enough. But music, to me, is, is my way of expression. So if there's a situation that I'm going through and that allows me to tell it in a way that I might not understand it at, at that time because it's not for me, it's for someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for them to, to go through and understand, you know, at this time, like, hey, I can relate to this. That's what it's for, you know. And music is poetry, it so is. I think that the older you get, the better you get, and it's timeless when it's done right. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And with that, you are working on a CD. Yeah, I'm working. On it. I've been I've been writing and, and recording for a long time, you know. So I'm going to release. Uh, I'm releasing music um, right after my my sports drink and my my company takes off. Okay, so you have uh, you've written a book. Correct. Um, you are working on a CD, you're working on a movie, and now tell us about the sports drink. I well, mean, I is there anything you don't do? No, I have, I have a company. The company's called Leg Entertainment. It stands for Lee Entertainment Group. It's an LLC. And underneath my company is an array of umbrellas, you know, um, from my race team to... Okay, um, now wait. Yeah. Okay, you just introduced something new. Okay, <laughs> race team. What, what kind of racing? Uh, drag racing. Okay, drag yeah. racing. Okay. Yeah. So from that to a clothing line, my clothing line is called Vigilante Rock. Uh, my stage name is Malik the Vigilante. So underneath that is, you know, my sports drink that's coming out, which is called Game Time Sports Drink. Game Time Sports Drink. Game okay. Time. We only have a few minutes left. Yeah. Um, you're a Christian man, yeah. very, just the nicest guy. I can't even imagine you in jail for murder. I mean, that just, it's just that, yeah, those two yeah, things yeah. just don't go together at all. Yeah. You're happily married. Yes, I am. Been you have almost 13 years. Now. 13 years. Five sons. Five. <laughs> five boys. Five boys. Yeah. That's such a blessing yeah. right yes, there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, and they play football. Yes, and they're yeah. taken after dad. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, what was it? I wanted to ask you. So, oh, the sports drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about that. What, yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a sports drink. Ulti um, ultimately, it's, it's called Pit Fuel. And under Pit Fuel is my first line of drinks. It's called Game Time Sports Drink, which is like a Gatorade. Um, it's a it's a sports drink, okay. like an electrolyte replacement drink, 
And what I'm doing with this is basically branding. It's just branding the name. I'm not trying to do stories now because of you know my relationship that I have with a lot of professional athletes in the, the, the Clovis and Fresno community. I've been coaching at uh, for almost this is my sixth year for the Clovis Cowboys. Fantastic. And we have a great you know great fan base. Of, you know we have great kids, great parents, and I'm introducing my drink at just the grassroots levels here in the city, and uh, and basically I just want to brand that name and and take it from there. Excellent. Malik's already agreed to come back and do a follow-up because we're waiting to see when the movie's going to be yes, coming out. We are waiting for the sports drink to be released. So we already have a guarantee he's going to be back, which is which is uh, excellent news. Where do you stand with St uh, Snoop right now, and uh, how did you find Fresno? Well, my manager at the time, actually uh, way back when, uh, we went to the Soul Train Awards, and to make a long story short, uh, I was with him and I saw this, this, this woman over here and I told him, I looked at him and I said, hey, I'm a mayor here. And he kind of laughed off. And to make a long story short, he and I we went over and we started talking to her. And I heard her. I heard it in my head. And I told her at that time, I said, God said, I'm going to marry you. And we've been together ever since. And she happens, she, she's from Fresno. Her name is Rochelle Lee. And okay. she's from Fresno. So. Rochelle? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You bagged a good one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good thing. Good do, you, do you ever see Snoop? Um, not as much, uh -huh. you know. Um, that's that's something that's still in the works. You know, we will be back together in a completely different life. And then, how did you leave? Did you leave on good terms? Yeah, we, left on, you, yeah, oh. we left on good terms. Okay. I mean, it was a good. It was a situation where I knew that's where God wanted me at that particular time. It was time for you know after the after the trial was over. You know, I'm a man, and I have to just to go my own way. That's and, right. And, and he goes his own way. And we're at this point, right now. Well, Malik, I. I'm just so thankful that you came in. Thank we you for we me. didn't get nearly <laughs> anything out on the table, but we will have you back. Thank you. And uh, just outstanding. Best of luck thank in you. everything, all your endeavors. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Voice of the Valley. And um, I always appreciate your comments and your feedback. And you can write to me at Kathy at Central Valley Talk dot com. You can uh, give me suggestions. You want to be on the show? I'd love to hear from you. And we will wrap it up, and we'll see you next Monday. Thank you very much. I want to thank my guests, Jeannie Burkhart and McKinley Malik Lee, Jr. Thank you. All right. Thank you.